Well, Peter here on the radio bench again. Today we're going to talk about something that is kind of interesting, which is Geiger counters. We have a few things here to show off and talk about, and along with the Geiger counter. The Geiger counter here, this is a kit that I built, oh, I don't know, three, four years ago, I guess, maybe. It's run by a 9-volt battery. It's got both a visual, visual and an audio output. The key device in the Geiger counter is the Geiger Mula tube, which is the, yeah, the long cylindrical thing. can't say that word. Uh, that is part of the part of the kit, and it's the key instrument, the key device. It's basically a vacuum tube that picks up ionized particles. When an ionized particle, alpha, beta, or gamma, passes through the tube, it ionizes the internal inert gas that is inside the, the tube, and it creates a pulse. So then the electronics then processes the pulse and puts it out as a, vid as a, as a uh, visual and also an audio output, in this case using a little piezoelectric uh, element. So, so there you go. So it's kind of cool to have it around. So, uh, okay. So, what do we have here? We have a few things that are sometimes known to be radioactive. One of them is the banana. Well, what a banana is composed of. Well, one of the things. Uh, sorry about the shaking of the camera. See if we can make that a little bit better. One of the things that goes on with bananas is they there's potassium. Well, potassium is radioactive. Let's take a look at it and see if it, see if it sets it off. Yeah, not really. Nothing un nothing unusual. Nothing really unusual there. So this banana is uh, not radioactive at all. In fact, I've been testing them for a while. Never really have found them, found any to be radioactive. Out of mostly, why did I do this? Out of idle curiosity, I would say, would be the best answer to that. What else do we have? This is a piece of Fiesta ware. Note that it's very pretty orange uh, color to it. See if we can show it as a Fiesta wear here. How do you see the Fiesta wear? There we go. There's the Fiesta wear mark. These orange plates were made uh, with uranium. So back in the 30s, I think, was when Fiesta started manufacturing. And, uh, and I think they were made well into the 60s. So, uh, and that's how you get that beautiful, really pretty orange color, so, if I didn't mention that. And let's put it up there to it. Whoa! Look at that. Look at that. It really sets it off, so. So, you want to be a little careful with red Fiesta wear. I believe red was the only one that, that they used uranium in it. Be a little bit careful with it if you have it. Uh... I think you can serve food on it, but I would not serve a wet food on it that could, especially an acidy wet food like maybe an orange, that uh, that could you know technically uh, etch into the uh, etch into the coating. So uh, uh, so you'd want to be a little a little bit careful about it, I suppose. So so what else do we have here? Uh, this is a piece of. Uranium glass, also called Vaseline glass. So they're kind of cool. I, I got this in honor of my grandson Andrew, who likes trains. So I picked this up a few years back, and the, uh, so let's 
let's look at something here. Let's see what happens when we I, when we uh, connect up a uh, UV source here. In this case, a kind of a little black light. And the Vaseline glass uh, fluoresces. Now that's one of the cool things about Vaseline glass. So there you go. So it's pretty interesting there. So there you go. That's the story on Geiger counters, the Geiger Mueller tube, and. Uh, Kind of cool to fool around with. I also wanted to know what the story was with radon, you know, in my basement. So, oh, and by the way, also, I meant to talk about that. You can hear, it's going, the, let's get the plate away from it. Uh, you can hear the particles uh, are clearly striking these, this uh, Geiger counter. Well, why is that? What's going on? Well, we, there are, really two major sources of ionized particles. One is from cosmic rays, which constantly bombard the Earth, which I think is primarily what we're seeing here. And we can actually kind of prove that in a second here. The other one is from below us. And in this case, I'm in the United States, northern United, northeast United States, and we have a lot of granite here and limestone. And of course, there's a lot of uranium. Uranium is very abundant on the Earth's crust. So, so if there's uranium, one of the daughters of uranium is radon. So radon gas, especially with here, down here in my radio shop, down, down in the basement, is, a, is certainly a, yeah, is a concern. It's not so much in this one because it's pretty well sealed off. So, so uh, so let's take a piece of, here's a piece of uh, ferrous, here's a ferrous metal, piece of, piece of steel. And can that, let's, let's see if we can put that on there and see if it shields it. Yep, it does. Still picks up a couple, but it, it, it does seem to affect it. Let me pull it away. So it, it did drop down the counts a little bit. So, interesting anyway. So, anyway, fun with the Geiger counter on the bench today. Have a good day, and hope you enjoyed this.